Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I wanted to talk to you guys about the changes made to video transitions, titles, and open effects inside of DaVinci Resolve 17. So you can find all of these in the effects library either on the edit tab with video transitions, effects, and open effects, or if you prefer to work on the cut page, you can find the same transitions, titles, and effects up here at the top with the appropriately labeled transitions, titles, and effects. Now, one of the things you'll immediately notice booting up DaVinci Resolve 17 is that they have added these little icons next to each of those titles and effects. So this is nice for getting a preview on what the effect actually does without necessarily applying it to your video clips. But even better than that is that you can hover over one of these effects and see a preview of what it would look like if you applied it to the clip before you add it. So when you're hovering over it, there'll be a little line that goes down from the top to the bottom. And this basically represents how far into the effect you are. So you can scrub left and right in order to see part of the effect at different stages. So if you go to the right, you're at the end. If you go to the start, well, you're obviously at the start. And then the middle goes without saying as well. So just by scrubbing from left to right with a title or effect, you can get a pretty good idea of what that's actually going to do. And what's nice is that these are actually quite responsive as well. Uh, I'm running on a mid-range at best laptop, but but regardless of which effect you try to preview here, hovering over it, it almost immediately gives you the preview. So it's very nice that it's responsive there. Now, of course, as with most editions of Resolve, they have added some new effects, particularly in Fusion Transitions down here. So we can find effects such as a glitch transition. So just like always, we can add a transition between two clips by dragging it onto the timeline and positioning it on the border. I can't say this for sure, but it might actually be quicker to get a little bit of a preview here by checking each individual frames in the effects library rather than waiting for the clip to pre-render. You can see that little red bar at the top there. So you might need a few seconds for it to get to play fully there. But we can see our glitch transition with its defaults there. Another cool transition is rotate or rotate 90 degrees. So before this might have taken quite a bit of manual work in order to get the screen to rotate into a new clip like this. But now that that's a new pre-made effect, you can just add it between two clips and go. So likewise, we also have some new titles. You can preview how a title is going to look like just by looking at the thumbnail or by hovering over it, just like with other effects. So for this new Jitter title, you can see how the drop shadow behind the base text characters shakes as the clip progresses. Another useful title is the callout. So this would be used when you want to point to a specific area on your video clip and give some information about it, such as the name of the object people are looking at or some detail about it. We can add these to the timeline by dragging them onto usually video track two or above so that it will display over the background clip rather than behind it. And with a title like a call out, there's probably going to be a lot you'd want to customize about the default template, such as the thickness of the line, whether the endpoint is a circle rather than rather than a diamond square and possibly the font and size of the text itself. So if you click on titles or effects, you can edit them just like before in the inspector. However, they've reorganized the tabs up here. Before, I believe there was three tabs, which was video, effects, and audio possibly, but now there's also transitions and images. So for things like transitions, which would have been categorized under effects before, it's now its own separate category. So the different aspects of the inspector are separated a little bit more. So for a title specifically, you can see the title specific settings are over here on the title tab and the settings that apply for any video clip, such as the background clip, the zoom and position of it, for instance. Now, one thing I've noticed is that in the titles of Resolve 17, a lot of the settings are actually hidden, which is good for new users who don't want to be overwhelmed by every setting you can use in Resolve, but rather to focus on what's important. So for instance, for a callout, you definitely want to change the text. You'd probably want to change the font, but other things such as this diamond here, maybe that's less specific. So you might not see some of the settings you'd want to change. If you're ready to go a little bit more advanced, there is a new button here that moves over to the Fusion tab for this selected clip. Now any Fusion title, you could always edit that before, but this button is a shortcut for you. So when you're editing a pre-made fusion title, they tend to group all of the nodes together into a group and you can double click on these pre-made groups in order to see all of the components that go into making that title. So for instance, this S rectangle one underscore five here is actually referring to this little diamond here that um, marks the callout point. 
So if I want to edit something about that, I, I can double click on the title for this note over in the inspector. And you can probably find a lot of new settings here to fully customize the title templates. So for instance, I might want to increase the width and height here. By default, they're linked together. And by doing that, we can have a much bigger symbol for the call out. Now that's probably too big, but you can lower that down. Maybe you also want to curve the corners. So using the curvy border style and then adding a border on, you can see now the corners of this rectangle are much less sharp. Anyway, the main thing to note is that if you don't see a setting over here in the title settings, try finding it in Fusion if you're feeling a little bit more adventurous. Now, as for effects that go right onto your video clips, you'd be looking at open effects here, which is another tab. So with open effects or the effects that apply to an entire video clip, but they're not generally used for transitions directly between two clips, but they occur on the full duration of your timeline. I haven't uh, noticed too many new ones here, but just like with transitions and titles, you can see the thumbnail to get an idea of what those effects do. And then you can also hover over them to see a preview of what that effect would look like with its default settings on your video clip. So here we have abstraction, which is a type of stylized uh, vignette when you want the center to be focused on, but darkening the corners of your video clip or other effects like film damage, which can give your video clip more of an old timey look where you would have these little lines that go from top to bottom. So like before, you can drag your effects onto your video clips that you want to apply them to. Left click on the clip and you'll be able to find the effects inside of the effects tab here. You can also see that under effects we have three categories, fusion, open effects, and audio. So these open effects are obviously going to fall under effects. And just like always, you all have a bunch of settings that you can customize about them, like being able to turn it on and off or keyframeable or animatable properties that you can use in Resolve. So that just about covers what's new and the same about video transitions, titles, and open effects inside of DaVinci Resolve 17. Note that it's still in public beta, so some of this might change before the final release. But I've been Chris, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in my future video content.